Hi everyone, this is Laura with Lonely Pines Farm. We're so excited to share with you today, we recently had the coolest experience where we went out to the Skagit Valley to hang out with local potato farmers to talk more about the potato community and the future of farming. It was such a fantastic experience. We learned so much. We got to get to know these farmers and their families and it even challenged some of our own biases and stereotypes. For example, we had no idea that 99% of farms in Washington are family run farms. You know, we've talked before about big Ag, and I guess in our mind we just kind of lumped most large-scale production into the bad guy and Monsantos and honestly these are just families out here trying to, to make a living trying to do what we're doing but they're successful enough to do it on a larger scale and it was really incredible to get an insider's perspective but before we get into the farm tour let's start with some fun facts we had no idea that Skagit Valley boasts some of the richest soil in the world, which explains how they get all those amazing tulips and daffodils. <laughs> and it's also great for the potatoes. There are over 120,000 acres of potatoes grown in the Skagit Valley, and they're all specialty potatoes. We tried to get some varieties out of them, but uh, the only one he was willing to part with was Chieftain. So we're switching our red potatoes over to Chieftain for next year. And our third fun fact is the incredible amount of technology that goes into farming these days. This may be old hat for some people, but I was surprised to find Find that the tractors are actually driven by GPS and the coordinates that they give them plant that plant in rows that are straighter than any human could ever do so I think that's pretty cool we were lucky enough to get paired up with Craig Knutson of Knutson Farms a sixth generation farmer whose family has been in the biz for over a hundred years according to Craig family operations are what makes it happen and I have to say we agree he took us out into the field and showed us their entire potato operation including yanking one out of the ground we talked extensively about cover cropping and crop rotation and general farm practices. They're huge supporters of healthy soil, healthy plants, healthy wildlife. In fact, there's an incredible amount of testing and science involved, along with a lot of large farm equipment. We were pretty much in awe of the general scale of their operation and the quantity of potatoes that they churn out. Just look at this giant storage unit. He said that this will be full of potatoes, floor to ceiling. The roundtable discussions were so enlightening and it was fantastic to hear everyone's opinion firsthand. These farmers really do go through it to make sure that you have fruits and veggies on your table. The hope is that in a hundred years, what we do now will be paying dividends. So why was this such an eye-opening experience? Well, it was incredibly moving to hear straight from the mouths of farmers that the future of farming is in danger. Over the years, family farms have been disappearing. In fact, uh, the Knutson farm, two thirds of the land that they use is land that they've rented from old family farms that don't farm anymore. And in the last 10 years, we've gone from 300 potato farms in Washington all the way down to 200. You know, it's incredibly difficult to break into farming if it's not a family business. Not only do you need the money for infrastructure, you need the knowledge. Uh, it's incredibly difficult to break into. I mean, we can tell you that firsthand, <laughs> it ain't easy. And we've been seeing lately that a lot of these family farms are getting handed down to the children and they may have different ideas. Maybe one wants to farm, maybe one doesn't. Maybe they can or can't buy out the other half and they're just kind of getting divided and the farm is fizzling. All right, so we're generally losing family farms. What else is going on? Well, farmers also spend about a third of their time fighting legislature that is designed to prevent farming practices. Add that on to all these rising costs and increasing operational expenses, and it's no wonder that food security is more important now than ever. In fact, we've never really been big preppers, but since meeting with these farmers and since looking at our recent grocery bill and gas bill and everything else, uh, we're definitely going to be double down, doubling down on growing more produce next year and trying to be a little bit more self-sufficient. So you may be asking what you can do to help the agricultural community, and we've got three things for you. Number one, get to know your local farmer. Uh, start building those relationships. Get straight to the source of your food. Figure out exactly where it's coming from and help support their farm directly. You know, a farm is nothing without its customers. Number two, vote in favor of agriculture. Pay attention to local bills and movements that are coming your way and always keep your farmer in mind. We wanna support them, not hinder them. And number three, expose your children to agriculture at a young age. We need our next generation of farmers and they're not gonna find a love for it unless they get to experience it. So find local agriculture classes, your 4-H, and see if you got a little farmer on your hands. 
Oh, and if you're looking for some additional reading, we were recommended the book No More Food Fights, which I've added to my list to read this winter. But if you've already given it a once over, let us know what you think in the comments. Well, I hope this was informative and opened your eyes to some issues that are going on within our local farming community and maybe feel a little bit of warm fuzzy for our local family farms. Um, if you got any questions, definitely drop them below. Please like and subscribe and have a great day, everyone.